Hello everybody, um, as introduced, I'm Jane Copland. I work as an SEO consultant at IEMA in London. Um, I'm going to talk about the five primary problems that uh, we generally face in international SEO campaigns. Um, these consist of uh, the language used throughout a website, uh, duplicate content, which often stems from um, using the same skin for different regions over and over again, site structure, uh, generally three different things that you're going to want to go for, either subdomain, subfolder, or CCTLD, and uh, the use of foreign non-English characters. Uh, the first problem that we see people come across quite often is um, language choice um, and duplicate content issues. Um, now, most of you probably know that you can um, target a, a website or any part of a website, subfolder, subdomain, to a location in Google Webmaster Tools. Um, if you don't know that, um, that's what you can do. It will allow you to target any country in the world, any region, and you can add um, different parts of a website to target different areas. The problem with this is you can only target one area. So if you have a Spanish website, you can't geo-target it to Spain, Mexico, and Argentina. Um, you can only do it to one. So this is where language becomes very important. Um, language is a really great indicator to Google, obviously, of um, the markets that you want to target. If you, can only, if, if you can't go in and say, I want these are the three or four different Spanish markets that I'm interested in. Um, as you can see, we've got a SERP here for the Mexican results for poker. You've got Mexican websites, you've got Spanish websites, you've got English websites, albeit Wikipedia, and they can rank pretty much anywhere. Um, you've got a .NET, which obviously doesn't get, uh, hand itself over to being from any particular location immediately, but that turns out to be a Spanish site. So, as you can see, you're not just being served Mexican results here, you're not just being served Spanish results here. The .com, uh, .mxs are all... Uh, targeted to Mexico immediately, you can't target them anywhere else in Google. Um, but you don't actually know if other people have gone in and said this is a specifically Spanish website, for example, ES dot something or other, they could have gone in and done that, you don't know. However, Google's smart, they know that because it's in Spanish, this is going to be interesting to people in Mexico. Um, even with, we found even with uh, geo-targeting domains, it only really serves as a hint to Google, um, they don't have to take it as a directive, and it's been the case in a couple of sites that we've worked on that it hasn't really worked out properly. You have a site that's targeted to the US and it keeps coming up in the UK. It keeps saying United Kingdom after it. It's hosted in the US. You've been doing link building from the US. You've been doing everything that you're supposed to do and it's just not working out. Well, for that reason and that, <laughs> and you know, you can't rely on it. Sometimes Google does get it wrong. Um, I've got an example here, sorry, Dave, of Yorkshire.com, which has tried to repurpose some stuff in French. Unfortunately, they've done quite a strange job of it. I don't know if the French actually use the term go racing, but it almost seems like half of this is in English and the rest of it's in French. Even in the URL, if you see they're using horse racing in the URL. Now, the, the term for horse racing in French is very different to the term we use in English. I, my high school French is probably not going to allow me to pronounce it with any um, grace, so I won't. But as you can see, it's the... Um, the terms that are highlighted there, you have to do things like translate your URLs. And I know that's sometimes hard, and sometimes in a, a, it's, that's perfect world stuff because the CMS that you're using or the skin that you're using doesn't allow it. But if you can, it is another directive that shows this is supposed to be a French dip page. This is supposed to rank in France. The Welcome to Yorkshire sign, actually, the, 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 um, not the best example, but I, actually, I find that interesting as well because it hasn't been translated. Now, if you had a, a brand name and you've got a... Um, like a tagline that's got important keywords in the in the tagline that's something that you want to optimize and you want to have rank for, you need to translate that as well. Obviously, that might be an image, but they could have be using CSS Im image replacement so that the text itself actually appears on the page. Why is that in English if you're trying to target French customers? Second point, um, and this one comes up, I don't know anyone who hasn't thought about this or struggled with it, subdomain, subfolder, or CCTLD. Um, right off the bat, subdomains are not my favorite way of doing it. Um, the reason for that is that they don't, they're kind of the worst of both worlds, if you ask me, um, from an SEO perspective only. They kind of act a little bit like completely new domains by themselves. They don't um, gain very much from their parent domain in terms of 
Google SEO strength. They don't gain much page rank from their uh, parent domains. Um, they're not automatically geo-targeted in webmaster tools, or you have to go and do that yourself. Obviously, you can, but it's not. It doesn't come born with being a, a German subdomain. Um, there's a lot of reasons, though, why people do like to use them, and quite often it's uh, ease of development. Um, you've got other people who say, look, this is the, the easiest way that we can do this. You can host subdomains in different places than the parent domain, so that can be useful. You can host de.whatever.com in Germany. You can host fr.in France. You can't do that with subfolders. So th there are benefits to it, but they're just, again, it's, it's my least favourite. But if there's reasons why you'd want to use it instead, go for it. I mean, it... You can overcome that with um, the other the, the other things that you can do for internationalization. Subfolders are my are my favourite. If you're going to be using the same domain um, from an SEO point of view, they're great. They inherit lots of good juice from their parents. Um, a downside is it doesn't look quite as uh, targeted. If you're a user and you see slash fr, it doesn't look quite as good if. if as if it's a CCTLD, if it's a .fr domain. Um, again, that's, that's overcome, that you can overcome that and it's not a massive deal, but that's a usability issue, I suppose, a click-through issue. And then finally, um, CCTLD. Disadvantage there, you're starting with a brand new domain, uh, brand new website, most likely. It doesn't have any strength whatsoever. It's not probably ranking particularly well when you start with it. That also means that it's probably not been spammed in the past, so you don't have to clean anything up. But you're, you're dealing with a brand new site. However, straight out of the box, geo-targeted. People look at it, they, if they're in France and they see .fr, they think, cool, this is something that's actually for me. I quite like using those if you're um, CCTLDs, if you've, if you've got a uh, campaign and you're really interested in doing um, offline stuff and making it a really well-rounded campaign, you're not just putting up another skin that you're going to market in, in Portugal and you're not going to do much offline, you're, not gonna, you, you're just sort of putting it up there because it's up there. Well, for that, I would use a subfolder or a subdomain. For something where you're really con concentrating on the region, I would prefer a CCTLD. Don't think too fast. Is this Florida or Australia? The good news is it doesn't actually matter terribly much. Now, back in the old days, we thought, oh, if I want to rank in Australia, all my links have got to come from Australia. Well, yes, you need links from the, you need to do link building in the regions that you're trying to rank in, but we have found that it's not quite as much of a big deal as we ever thought it was. What is more important is your good old boring link building um, stats, uh, how many sites you get links from, the um, uh, C classes that they're on, different hosts. Well, that is more important than the region that you get it from. By the way, it's, uh, it's the Gold Coast, it's not Florida. Foreign characters in URLs. Now, this is something that, again, a couple of years ago we would have said, don't worry about it, just uh, use Roman characters because they're Google and, um, and even your browser's not dealing with it particularly well. Well, this isn't true anymore either. If you're wanting to market in Russia, use Russian characters, use Chinese characters. Google can handle it, um, even your browser can handle it, it understands the encoding. Um, of course, Wikipedia can get away with just about whatever it likes, but it's still a good example. It's things that you know, are working. Now, these pages are ranking in Russia, they're ranking in, in, in Yandex and um, I do, they're ranking in Google if, uh, RU and Google CN for what they want to, for, for, uh, that's actually the term for swimming, that's what I just used, and they're ranking for, for what they need to rank for. So you can use them, and I would say that going forward that's going to be more and more important. Google's going to become better and better at it, you want to do that, even if it is a bit difficult. Um, and one extra, because I've actually, um, this is number six as opposed to just number five. Um, On-site geotargeting. Now, I still do work for um, the SEO, uh, SEO Q&A forum. I don't know if anyone here uses it, but uh, members come along, ask questions, and we answer them about SEO. And I would say we get a lot of questions weekly, but at least two or three of them per week, sometimes even daily, are about people who have devised a really clever tactic that they want to use to redirect people when they come to the site and, you know, we're going to send UK visitors this way and French visitors that way. And I mean, this isn't the same as saying, okay, well, I'm going to change uh, dollar signs to euro signs because I can tell that someone's coming in from Canada. Just making little small changes like that, often um, just uh, image changes, things like that, oh, that's fine. I mean, you're not going to get penalised for that. It's not going to look weird to Google. But if you're, if you're forcing people one way or another, either you can look like you're cloaking or you can end up cutting Google off from big parts of your website. Um, there's nothing but trouble that I've seen there, and you know sometimes you get people who know how to do it well, but in, in, unless you've got, unless you're really really good at that, I just would stay away from it. Just don't do it. Apple, I think, have done a really fantastic job of um, 
the subfolder uh, way of doing things. They've got apple.com slash UK. If I search for Apple here, that ranks. Then you've got the, the local result, and then you've got apple.com ranking underneath it. They're not sending me off to some random place because I, they allow me to visit every, you know, DE, NZ, every single subfolder, they allow me to go there. And it ranks properly. It didn't used to. This is, you know, you can see Google getting better at this. Back in the old days, Apple.co.uk ranked for Apple in the UK. And that was great for them. I think they were a small design company. But it's not good for user experience. Generally, if people search for Apple, you know that they're, they're after these things. They're not after the design company. So Google are really good at it now. Trust that Google will get it right. But you have to verify it. Like I said, you know, we've come across situations where it, it's not working particularly well. So you have to make sure when you're doing this that you're checking it up on it and don't just set it and forget it because they might get it wrong, but in general they're going to get it right. Thanks. Okay, hi guys. Um, my name's Paul Riley. I'm uh, currently, or now I'm an independent SEO consultant, formerly uh, over at Sticky Eyes uh, and having just moved down to this wonderful city of London. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about future spam. Okay, so a few caveats. I don't claim to know exactly how Google works. I don't claim to be able to see the future. I don't claim to have a pet Google engineer. And I don't claim to have magical powers. Um, however, I do believe that by understanding the past, we can uh, understand the future better. And what I'm going to share with you today is what I personally believe, not only what I personally believe, but what I practice. Um, I'm not going to go too far into the future. I'm just going to look at a few things that, if I were you guys, I'd recommend being mindful of um, when doing your particularly off-site SEO. Um, OK, so we're going to start with what is a filter, just so we all understand. Um, <clears throat> filters are generally applied to combat spam. And given that most modern search spam is generally link uh, related, these filters do appear, or the, at least the, the latest filter that we've seen um, does appear to be looking at links, and given that links are about 90 or 80 percent, or depending on what you believe, um, a significant factor in, uh, in ranking. Okay, and the purpose of the filter is simply to remove the spammers and present the best possible relevant search result uh, for Google's users. Okay, and and this this data that I'm going to show you as well, just so you know, credit where it's due. This is Sticky Eyes data, um, but here's a filter. Um, I've now I've covered this before, so I'm going to whip through this quickly. This is what a filter looks like in terms of uh, on the right hand on the uh, um, y-axis. There we've got uh, volatility. And that volatility is the standard deviation of search movement or the, uh, of the ranking movement over time. And as you can see there, the big kind of peak, which is across all these, uh, all these SERPs, represents um, uh, an increase in volatility and therefore a significant change in, um, in, in rankings. At the same time um, as, as that happening, oh, oh, here we have it again, the second peak there represents in and around the, the filter introduction that came in and around the period that some people refer to as caffeine, but there was carnage. Um, last year, you can see there the big peak. That was what some people referred to as Vince, but that's the, the evidence of a filter. Oh, and this is what happens when you get hit by a filter. It's not good. Um, I won't mention who that was. Um, it wasn't one of mine. Um, but there are two keywords, bingo and online bingo. And it ha the impact came around the same time. Again, look at the date. That correlates nicely with this um, introduction of a filter. So there we have evidence of a filter. Now, part of this game is trying to anticipate what's going to come next. So, oh, all filters have thresholds. Because obviously, Google needs to find a way of determining who gets hit and who stays. So for this reason, Google have thresholds. So we came up with this clever way of identifying a threshold and where it sits um, through a methodology we call spectral analysis. So basically, we take a load of brands. This is, uh, these are all poker sites. And um, we stack them up in order. 
the guys on the left, the guys who've got loads of variation, loads of click here, visit this site, just random shit. There's links that link to them that don't have poker in the anchor text. They're over there, sorry, they're on the left. The guys on the right, which include party poker and poker stars, they have a much less of it. In fact, they have um, a very, very small amount of other variations. We're ignoring the keyword and the brand variations, but they've got none of this kind of click here, visit the site, all the other stuff. Not the URLs, not the keywords. I'm not containing the keywords. I'm talking about just random links that aren't there for SEO purposes. OK, coincidentally, the two brands on the right got whacked for the keyword poker. So again, it may be right, it may not be right, but I'm just trying to make sense using data of where a threshold sits. OK, so this is an example of spam detection that occurred um, earlier, well, sorry, last year, April, May time, or at least was ramped up. The threshold appeared to be shortened, and more people got whacked. OK. So what I'd say from this is, and this is currently, as it stands at the moment, this is before I get to looking at the future, but as it stands right now, beware of anchor text in your text links. OK? I've, in the last, well, recently, we managed to get a brand new site ranking without, well, for casino, it was in the top 30, um, without even using the keywords casino. We used the brand variations, which happened to contain the keyword um, casino. And we use proximity text. That's the text in and around the link. So where you've got, um, um, where you've got, say, I don't know, uh, a click here, make sure you get poker next to it, or online poker near it, or in the region. Other things that Google can look at to determine what the page that is being linked to is about um, is content within that. Well, not just the proximity text, but stuff within that paragraph, text within that paragraph. What is the theme? What's the semantic meaning of the content within the paragraph where the link sits. Also, URL relevancy. So not just the domain, but all, or the subdomain, but also the directory, the subdirectory or the file name itself. They give Google an indication of what that page is about, where the link that you've acquired through whatever means is about. OK, one second. I'm just going to get a drink. OK, so. As it stands right now, if you're doing link building for any website, beware of anchor text. And by that, I mean using, using target keywords, poker, bingo, casino, play bingo online, sport betting, whatever it is. And this applies particularly to deep pages. And this is as it stands at the moment. OK, so what's next? Now, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but what about social signals? OK, now this is an interesting one. There's a lot of debate around this. OK, so Flickr, Facebook and Twitter. Twitter, very important. But does Google take tweets, references, citations within Twitter and use it as part of its ranking algorithm? Well. Let's look at what Twitter is. Twitter is an evolution of a communication technology. If you head back in time there, we've got the printing press, the telegraph, the telephone, mobile phones. And in more recent years, the internet, email, smartphones, tablets. Now, social signals, Twitter is simply an evolution of a communication technology. To say that Google would factor in um, uh, tweets and content from Twitter, it's kind of like saying, well, would you ask the same question about SMS? Would they use SMS? Would Google use their email data, which they've got extensive amounts of email data, to factor as a, a, a ranking uh, mechanism? Um, and also, would Google, think about this, would Google adjust its rankings using third-party data? Probably not. Um, would Google filter using third-party data? My guess, it's even less likely. At the end of the day, 
Twitter and Facebook are just communication technologies which are designed for viral distribution and engineered in such a way that news spreads. And if you have something that's genuinely newsworthy and, uh, and, 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 and warrants a citation, then it will do so. It will proliferate through, uh, through a, a viral, virally engineered system such as Twitter or Facebook, and you'll acquire a, a link um, in context, a legitimate one. So my guess, looking into the near future, will, and this is only my opinion, you may have your own, whatever is said or not said, I believe that social signals aren't considered and won't be considered as a ranking factor. Um, and certainly won't be considered um, as, a filter, uh, as a filtration factor. But then, that's, again, I'll just caveat this with that's just my honest opinion. And I can give an example of this where I know it isn't being implemented at the moment. Um, last year, we did a bit of PR. I won't mention the brand. We did this bit of PR, and um, the story um, basically went out on uh, TechCrunch. It ended up being the most, uh, uh, the top tweet meme tech story. It uh, trended in two, place, two places simultaneously on Twitter for two days. Um, long story short was the original link where everything came back to from the press release was removed. Nothing moved. So I can categorically say that at that time, um, the evidence suggests, or categorically say, that it does not have, or at the time, it did not have an influence of ranking. Okay, so what else is there? Now, this is one that I believe will come into play soon. I believe that Google will introduce a canonical filter. And by this, I mean, okay, let me think about all the links that you get to your site. Do you get variation? just as you get variation in your anchor text? Or do you link to examplecasino.com? Do you have the forward slash in there? Do you have the dub 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 in there? Do you link to an old legacy domain, an old legacy domain that happens to 301? Um, obviously, there'll be a natural distribution of which URL generally gets the link. But ordinarily, there will be a blend. So my recommendation here is, and this is what I'm, I do myself, and this is what I practice, is to build variation into not just the anchor text, but also into the target URL and the canonical form. OK. So in short, mix it up. OK, linking patterns. I'll just get through this one quickly. Um, artificial linking patterns. We'll start with artificial. This is your money site. You go and buy a link. That link's got some backlinks. Then you go buy another link. Or, sorry, acquire a link. And then you get another link. And there we see a typical pay link, linking strategy occurring. But does that happen in the real world? No, no, it doesn't. What happens is this. You've got your money site. You put out a press release or a bit of news, or you put something out on your site that's genuinely citationable. If that's a word, I don't know. I think I just made it up. You get a. No, that's fine. That's good. At least we're straight on that. Then you get a link. Okay, so your linking site links to your money site, and it has some links. But then it gets more links, and so on. This is what a natural linking pattern should look like. Is Google looking at that right now? I don't think so, because the previous version, the unnatural artificial linking pattern that I demonstrated earlier, is working a treat. Will this come into play in the future? I think so. And even if it doesn't, it's certainly worth bearing in mind. You know, we can't predict what's going to come next, but if I was Google, I'd be starting to look at this really carefully. It's very easy to detect and very easy to filter for. Um, in the real world, what does that mean? Well, it means engaging with genuine relationships with sites that are actually active doing stuff, not just buying a boatload of links from a, a Russian guy. OK. Who is data? 
Okay, now this is one that it's kind of been talked about for a long time. Is there any evidence to suggest that it's been looked at? Well, I haven't seen any, um, but certainly worth considering. If you are building a content network or a particular large-scale content network, or you are dealing with brokers or, or, or other content networks, make sure that you check that there is no identifiable linking who is pattern. Okay, to actually to actually implement that and to make sure that you are on the right side of the fence, it means having a load of virtual offices, staying away from all the domains by proxy, and making the whole the whole who is data footprint look natural. As I say, there's no, I've not seen any hard evidence to suggest that this has is been implemented right now, but it's another thing that I expect if it isn't being done, it will be done. Okay, so in summary, keep your link nat your linking natural. Avoid using your you know your keyword as your anchor text. In fact, you don't need to. It just needs to be part of that. Key it needs to be a keyword token within a phrase, and it'll still have benefit, and you'll be a lot safer. Throw in a few occasionally, but keep it within the acceptable norms and tolerances of that SERP. And those norms and tolerances change, by the way, guys. So I'd keep it some nice distance short of the threshold. Um, I don't buy into the uh, Google using social signals as a ranking factor or a filtration factor. Uh, be mindful of your linking patterns and consider who is records when working with content networks. And remember, picking a keyword is picking a fight. Thank you. I totally disagree with Paul on the social signals. I think one of the biggest problems that Google has recently is the content scrapers have been getting the social signals out there quicker than the original content people, and that's been the major issue. We've seen flip-flops on that a lot. We released a happy birthday Bob domain, brand new domain, put it out there. The only thing that went to it was tweets, nothing else. It came straight in within two hours, three hours of it being launched. I honestly, social signals, I've, it's, it's a signal. It's not a ranking factor. It's a signal. The more positive signals you get, the more positive what, things happen to you. What do you say is a ranking factor? Yeah, well, I mean, the problem is, is that you've got all these different things. It's, it's like Jane pointed out. It's like we use terminologies as things like hints, signals, directives. So a straight anchor text link, it's like a directive to Google. It's saying, this link here is about bingo. Okay, there's no guesswork on it. If that page is about bingo and there's a link in there to Gala or Wink or Sun or anyone, you know what I mean? It's like, but it's just a URL link. That's more of a, like a hint, you know what I mean? It's not saying that this site's about bingo. And if you've got a, a site about flowers and plants and crap like that and a link to bingo, then that's pretty much like that's a negative signal because it's not really relevant. But if 80% of the rest of that content was about bingo, but it was just a site wide, eh, then maybe it's more of a, a socially acceptable hint. So it's like hint signals, it's ranking factors, totally different, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like how many ranking factors are there? I think at last count, uh, about a year ago, I think Matt said it's at the moment they're in about 246. But if you take each one of those, 246 there's maybe 30 or 40 quality signals and to each one of those ranking factors so it's it, it's a mind mess you know what I mean it's like the two things that I can definitely say work is links and content on the side but if you don't have links pointing to you with the word dogs and you don't have the word dogs on your website you ain't gonna rank for dogs but social I think is definitely a quality signal most websites have like social interaction between them and their users. Um, I recently ranked, before we like did a flip flop on it, but I, I came in at number three for the keyword AdWords. I've got no backlinks. It was a categorization page. The only thing that I, on there is that this is all the post by Dave Naylor on AdWords. It had AdWords in the title. We did three killer posts on AdWords. It got a lot of Twitter traffic. Eight, nine thousand straight through over a three, four day period. It came straight in for AdWords. I can't, I don't know if, why it did that. I don't do a category link from those posts into AdWords. Google just went, this site is really shit hot on AdWords at this moment in time. Which is the most, like, SEO'd page for AdWords? 
it was the most linked to with the internal anchor text for AdWords, it popped. I did no SEO on it. I don't SEO my website. I mess about with my website. So again, that is so, that's just social push, you know what I mean? So that's the only things that I've seen. It doesn't mean that it will work for you. It's just my opinion that I've seen. The same as Paul, he'll see things that I go, that'll never work. And he's like, oh no, dude, seriously, that worked. I mean, I've been told like about 20 different things how to get out of the May Day penalties. I'm like, okay, I've tried about 700. Um, some work, some don't. Some work for one site, but it won't work for another website. So it's, it's that kind of like getting the timing just right and legacy. But I do think social work. This is kind of like a presentation that I did for um, Distilled Pro Seminar. And when I did it, I said that Google were going to bring in maps into the organic results. The next day they did, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm hoping. In fact, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure the second to last slide from here is way, way away from the future, okay? So this is kind of like the way that I work. I try to imagine if I was Google, what would I do? And I think, oh God, they'd never do that because that's just way crazy, but they may just do it. So a little bit about me. Um, I own Bronco with Becky. She's the person that went through this this morning and changed a little bit of it and I lied to her. You never lie to your wife, it's a really bad thing to do. Um, we service local, nationals, international companies. We tend to work in very competitive industries, but we also work with really small companies as well. It's kind of like, uh, we don't work in the mid area, it's either like big or little. It's, it's just messed up that way. I speak at a load of these things, uh, and I get myself into loads of trouble by speaking at these. Um, so a little bit of background of what I want to look at is like from the affiliate point of view, I used to do affiliate stuff. I was the guy who used to like just tailcoat brands all the time. If I could beat brands in the early days, that was awesome. It was just like, it was just funny. Google is it's like, it isn't slamming it. They've closed that door, you know what I mean? It's like, it's really hard to sort of like tailgate someone like HMV, you know what I mean? It's like, and there's a deck in there that will show you. And brands are aware of this. They're really kind of like, well, if they're looking for party poker or 888 or, or wink bingo or something like that, th then they've all, they know about us. And we really shouldn't be paying the affiliates for that. So, and that mindset is like, is there now. It didn't used to be. Um, you said the situation where affiliate manager was like getting a cut of the, the overall and was like, no, you do it on brand, but don't tell anybody. Not that any of the merchants that I worked with, my affiliate manager wouldn't do that. So Sky Sports has been in the news just recently, obviously for the, the whole sexism stuff. But if you were an affiliate trying to work in Sky and you wanted to rank for Sky, I mean, look at the state of it. You know what I mean? You, there's a doorway there via Twitter. Um, there's a doorway there via news. But these are still kind of like, it's like discretionary from Google. Aerial Force is like, it's kind of weird that they keep sneaking in and out of there. I know they get told off, I would imagine, every now and again. HMV is even worse. They're not in the news. Well, okay, they are actually in the news because I think that they're now going to go bust or something. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be totally wrong. Um, but the official site, and then the official site again with double indentations. I mean, you don't see that often. You know what I mean? It's like, so there's the PPC ad that they're running and they've got like the four block underneath it and directly underneath it, they get the eight block. Then they get the maps for all the little stores around where I live. You can see my location set at Leeds at that moment in time. If you mess around with that location in the UK, you will change maps. Um, I suggest if you want to go serious into local, build kind of like a, a script that will just change that automatically and scrape for your results and find out what stuff is showing the three blocks, the eight blocks, uh, and the, uh, the full blocks. But again, just below them, it's hmv.com, hmv.com, hmv.com. There's no space for us. You know what I mean? I don't want to be a HMV affiliate anymore. I'm not going to make money from brand and chasing them down. And the ones that we can bid on, all of a sudden, it's like it really does become heavy. So you look at something like this one, which is Jimmy Choo Shoes. Um, and the problem with this is, is that all of a sudden, you get things flooded into these, like we spoke earlier today about Ugg boots. And the fact that the guys who can like bring in Ugg boots for like $2 and sell them for like $30 because they're just counterfeit, their budgets are massive. And that drives up the budgets for the people that's really trying to sell this stuff. So it becomes really kind of like really hard to do the brand bidding again or the product bidding within the PPC side of it. And Google doesn't seem to police this. I don't know why they don't. They just don't. It's like, it bugs me to hell. 
Um, but we have a little step in grace. We've got the shopping results in there. But my experience shows me that the data that Google gives you, somewhere down the lines, they will take that data and do evil with it. Um, I've worked with large local search companies that partnered with Google in the early days and gave them all their data just to find years down the lines that those contracts are now coming to renew. We don't want to renew. Why? We've been good to you guys. Yeah, but we've got the data now. We've seeded our database. We've got our maps data. We've got all this working. We don't need you. And I'm always wary of like giving Google like all my database stuff. It's like as soon as you do that, you've, you've give them the keys to the house. Okay, maybe only a copy of the keys, and if you're not changing your data quick enough, then they won't see any real value in it. They'll keep the data and they'll use it. But it's still, again, another entry point. Some people see these entry points as being like, oh, it's just another slot. I see them as another opportunity. Uh, below that, again, my favorite news. News used to be one of the biggest spammed areas in Google. They've really cleaned it up recently. Um, you can still get in, though. It's like the level to entry. So certainly use like the, the new news meta tags that they put into the header files. Definitely use those and definitely use like the, the new site maps. It's like the biggest clear indicator that you're doing the right thing. With the meta stuff, make sure you're not scraping any content because they'll just take the URL and just dump you straight out of news. I've seen sites, affiliate sites with good news stuff that you kind of like mix it a little bit. So you look at stuff that you know is going to get high traffic that you can sell underneath it. So if, I don't know, Rooney buys a, a mini Metro, you know what I mean, a 1960 something, you know what I mean? If you know that and you're a car dealership, people will search for this, they'll go for it. It's good branding. If you're really good at conversion, then you'll get traffic from it. God, I'm so behind. Doing great. Okay, so in Creedence Brand Space, we saw that with the HMV again, so bye. So realistically, the last few slides is all about us being locked out of this game. You know, I mean, it's great for the merchants because we can handle this sort of stuff, but it gets nasty. What gets even more nasty is like the map stuff. I said, oh, this is what they'll do. You know what I mean? And they just rolled it. You know what I mean? It's the local directory model is that we've seen clients that worked in this industry. The day that they rolled that out, it was 40% straight off traffic overnight. Boom, gone. Um, compare the credit card stuff. This has gone through. The DOJ's happy with this now, aren't they? They're like, yay, you go, Google, you're the man. It's like, oh, I, if the revenue from PPC wasn't so high on the comparators for this stuff, this, that's what the organic page would look like. So that, that's the future. The way that they rolled out the local stuff into organics, I'm pretty sure that's the local stuff in there. Um, they went out and bought boutique.com. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy, but I kind of feel that at some down, sometimes down the line, this is where we'll get to. This is what an organic page will look like. At the moment, this is a shopping channel, but again, it's easy for them to use that straight into the organics. We see how they embed stuff. How many people have seen this? It's like hotels near Harrogate. Um, obviously, that's where I live. That's a, a map search. But can you see like the little box at the top where it says check in and check out and the filter prices down the side of it? What happens if that was organic? What was if I searched in Google Organics and went hotels in Harrogate and that's the page that was presented to me? You've got one premium ad slot, the rest of it, Google doesn't take the telephone calls anymore. They don't want that. They want postcards. They want to know that you're in a physical address. They're taking this stuff very, very seriously. Google, in my opinion, has always been something about we don't want to put manpower onto this. We just want to automate it. We're a computer company. Why would you have postcards? Why would, you, why would you spend time and effort and manpower if you didn't have to, if it wasn't for something that's going to be monstrous? In saying that, that was the property search. And on the 10th of February, it's closing. They're going to knock it on the head because in their su surprise announcement a couple of days ago was that we feel that there's some really good comparative websites out there that we can't compete with. So there's still a little bit of hope there. That happened before I put this slide in. I was like, yay, positive stuff. So where next? I think that all the stuff that we've just seen there is like Google's business to business model. This stuff isn't. 
we're seeing Android, we're seeing Chrome OS. That actually is the Google Chrome laptop, the CR38. Um, that is an Android slate that you can buy on the open market at the moment. This stuff plugs directly into Google Central. This is Google's cloud. So all of a sudden, I'm now into their network and the gloves can then really come off because at the end of the day, if I'm into their network, I'm plugged into it, they don't need the business to business. If they give me a credit card, I can actually spend Google money. If I have Google checkout and they go the same way as PayPal have, all of a sudden I've got a model where I can just buy stuff via Google. Then wouldn't it just kind of make sense for Google to do something like that? If I search for Girl with a Dragon t Tattoo, why not let me stream it directly from their big massive database of YouTube videos that they're allowing more and more stuff. Channel 4OD is now hosted on YouTube. Why not wouldn't Google partner with someone like Amazon and I can buy it directly via my Google checkout? Why wouldn't Google just give me an interface like this instead of iGoogle? This works for me. I can see how many Android device, devices are connected to their cloud at the moment. I can move stuff from my phone and from my phone to my tablet, from my tablet to my computer. I can check my Gmail quickly. I can log on to Google Finance. Would it make sense, wouldn't it, for Google Finance just to buy a, a stock trading platform and a Forex platform, and I can trade stock and Forex via the finance platform? They bought boutiques, they're buying the ticketing system for all the airplanes. It just makes sense for them to do that. It does in my world anyway. Google Maps, well, how about a tablet that just gives you GPS? Oh no, sorry, they've already done that, haven't they? Look at the shares in GPS companies. They're flat because that is the future. Google is moving from a business to consumer. The only saving grace, or we're not gonna see this very much, is that was a search this morning. Okay, I'm still in there, yay. There's no pictures, there's no news feed. It's old, 10 blue links. This was, this is Google Retro. This is gonna disappear. Um, and I think it'll be sad when we see it go, but it's like, some industries, I think like online poker, online bingo, online casino, we still see this. But when we see the blended stuff hit those SERPs, that's when it's game on. That's me. I don't know how far I ran. See, honestly, seriously, when I did the presentation at SEO Moz, I was very much the same as that. I said, what if Google did this with the maps and it did this and it did this? And then the next morning it was like, oh my God, they did it? And I was like, so I'm pretty sure that we won't see that slide of like the Google Cloud, yeah. but I can't see why it wouldn't happen. Why Google wouldn't sell me a, a, a Google system that, that, that was in my laptop, it was on my slate, it was on my phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can just imagine it. it's like, hey Michael, I'm gonna watch Girl with a Dragon Tattoo tonight. Do you wanna watch it? Okay, invite friend, click. Makes sense. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, Microsoft have, have got all of that. They do yeah. it now. My phone's a Windows 7 phone. It plugs into my Xbox. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So I am going to kill myself just after this, okay. which is great. So now we have some, uh, some questions uh, for our debate, which we're not going to have too much time for, but um, I might extend the session just a little bit so we can get a few great questions in. Uh, who would like to ask any questions from the audience? In that case, I'd like to hear some of our panels uh, ideas. We talked before about um, <coughs> about um, Facebook and Twitter and their influence on, on Google. Uh, we had a little bit of a debate as to whether or not um, social interaction influenced influenced Google. Um, I think we had two that said yes and one that said no. Uh, here's the thing: do I do I get banged for dupe content when I take something that's on my site and put it on my Facebook and my Twitter account? No, you shouldn't do. The Okay, so like, like Google released the, the update last night, didn't they? The six o'clock update that basically said, we, we've fixed the duplicate content issues. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's really gonna be like fixed. Um, no, I, I think that they know those kind of sites are syndicated, the same as like uh, Dig and Tweet Mimi and those kind of syndicators. So you don't tend to see things like, um, like Tweet Mimi, like ranking above the original stuff if that makes sense. You know, if you put in the title of a blog post, nine times out of 10, if it's my blog post, my blog post will be there, and then the social elements, as it's, it's being picked up, will slowly start to appear. But it will never cause you dupe content. Um, so if it doesn't cause me dupe content. Yeah. Okay, anyone's agree? Oh, you're all, you're all agree. <laughs> I just think someone's gonna disagree. I mean, if, if, so if it's not gonna give me dupe content, 
<clears throat> that's great. Is it going to rank as highly if I'm, say I'm using my Facebook um, fan page for something like setting, setting up a social news site. And I don't actually put it onto a, a web page. I actually just use my Facebook for that. Um, am I not going to, am I not going to get as much power in that link for, uh, for the news I put up there since Google's now not looking at that type of data Do you in mean that way? Do you mean is the Facebook page not going to rank particularly well? Is it not going to rank particularly well? No, the Facebook page will rank fantastically well. Um, you see things ranking on Facebook all the time because of the power of the domain that they're sitting on. Um, there's different reasons why you'd want a Facebook page to rank and not something that belongs to you. Um, for social interaction purposes, for pure SEO purposes, you'd rather keep it on something that you owned because um, you don't own Facebook even if it's yours. Um, but it can rank very well if that's what... If, if you're looking to attract attention to it, I mean, Facebook pages are, they're not immovable. Um, I find sometimes Twitter pages are pretty immovable and that's very, very strong. But yeah, I'd, the only reservation that I'd have is it doesn't belong to you. So why are you doing it? Why are you putting very important content on something that doesn't belong to you? Could I just um, add to that? Um, yeah, I totally agreed. Facebook and more so Twitter, if, you've, uh, if you have an account that's uh, got plenty of friends, um, then it will rank so easy and so cost effectively. I mean, that's really the only reason why you may want to use a third party site such as Twitter is because you can get it ranking for peanuts for big, big terms. Um, a, an example of how well Twitter can rank um, and how it just sticks around. And I think this is pretty good for reputation management purposes. If you have something that comes up um, on a brand name or even on your own name and you want to get rid of it, Twitter pages will rank for anything for a long time. Even if you can't actually get the Twitter name um, itself, if, if you've got the, the title tag basically, if that's the word that you're trying to rank for. Um, just over a year ago, I deleted my Twitter profile and when you delete a Twitter profile, you can't claim it back immediately um, and just have it sitting dormant. So it was returning a 404 technically, but just the, the page this user doesn't exist. Um, it still ranks for my name a year later. Someone has actually reclaimed it um, when they rolled them back out again. The person's name is not Jane. Um, the last name is the same as mine though. So. The word Copland's on the page, Jane isn't, but because of all the links that it's had and the fact that it's on Twitter.com, no one follows the account anymore, so it's got links from elsewhere on the web. It doesn't have internal links from inside Twitter, but it still ranks, and it ranks quite well. I think the last time I saw it, it was ranking about sixth, so it's some good real estate just to put up there. It will rank for basically anything, like you said. So is can I use Facebook and sort of ignore the social media aspects of it, however, um, use it instead of a standard URL? Uh, besides the fact that you don't own it. Yeah, of course you can. But the problem that you'd have, uh, you know what I mean? It's like you don't know what Facebook's going to do. I wouldn't, seriously, I wouldn't suggest anyone build a business around that. I remember like some like hosting companies that are going to name, so like I'm not even going to out them at all for what they did. But they decide that, hey, Google is sending too much traffic to our servers. Let's just block them at router level. And that's kind of scary. I mean, most people wouldn't have even seen it. They're just kind of like, oh, Google stopped coming to my website. I wonder what I've done wrong. You've done nothing wrong. We've stopped it at root level. And Facebook would do the same. And Facebook could easily get so pissed with Google. Because they don't, Facebook's one of those websites that don't need Google, okay? Google is like just a pain in their ass. But it's like, they kind of like that pain in their ass, I feel. A bit like you Bob. This sounds like, yeah. yeah. From experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So, but if, if, if Facebook turned around and, like, say to Microsoft, how about we extend this deal and we'll actually just robots or text Google out of the equation? We just won't let them in. Would you want to build a business on a, something that a company could do that? Because you're dependent on Google finding this stuff. Facebook isn't dependent on Google, you know what I mean? And that's what makes Facebook awesome, you know what I mean? It's a great, it's a, I, I'm not a big Facebook fan. Um, I've got loads of Facebook friends that are kind of like, I don't even know half of them. Um, and they invite me to parties all over the world that I never go to. Uh, but it's, it's a massive community. It's, it's, a, it's like the great untapped. Do we have more, any audience questions? Bob, you seem like you had a question. Oh, okay. I thought you were just going to fuck with Dave. No. Oh. <laughs> well, if, if there are no questions, then we can actually end this session dead on time. Oh, you do have one question. Wait for the microphone. I have a question. Why, why did you suggest to build uh, multiple can canonical links? Okay. Okay, the, um, the reference to multiple canonical links. Um, and again, this is just my opinion. 
and this is what I practice, um, and this is what I recommend, um, is that if you were to tr if Google were to try and identify unnatural linking, one way they could certainly do it is looking at the variation in the canonical form of your backlink profile. If every link went to your site, um, I'll say 100% of a 1,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 links, all had the same canonical form as the target URL, then that would surely be an indicator of something artificial. Ordinarily, people would link with various you know, um, uppercase, lowercase, um, with and without the dub dub dub, with and without the train forward slash, there would always be natural variation in there. If I were Google looking for a, a, a thing to filter on, on natural linking, that would be the next thing on my hit list. And for that reason, this is why I practice variation in canonical form. Uh, you know, right now, uh, right now I'm trying to follow uh, the same pattern when building links to my sites because I had one accident. You know, I, I, one time I was building a website with, without www and was ranking high, and later I changed the without www drop down, and a couple of weeks later the one with www came up on the top. So I think you know using uh, different canonical incoming links can actually cause some uh, dilution in the results. If it's all canonicalized properly, then they all resolve at the same place anyway. And that's the page that, well, it depends how many backlinks are coming in. The, you know, the target where the 301 sends you to isn't necessarily the page that's going to rank in Google. Um, but all links that come in, providing all the 301 redirections correct, will resolve at the same point. And that's where your ranking factor, or that's, that's where you're going to determine where you sit in the SERPs. Thank you very much. I just cool. one thing on, I'm just trying to get my head around before I kind of like, would you link to a HTTPS version of it as well? And would you make sure that all the canonicals were 301 into one cluster? So I'm just concerned that people are going to go away and go like, I only link built to the non dub dub, and that resolves. And now you've got the non dub dub and the dub dub dub. One's got a PR4, one's got a PR2. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, Yeah. I'd kind of say, well, what, what looks natural? You know, what is the typical distribution and model that? If I'm being unnatural, if I, let's be honest, if we're building links the, the, dirty, the dark and dirty way, you'd have to try and make it look at least as if it happened organically. Does that make sense? I would, um, for the uh, HTTPS question, um, if you're unlucky enough to be working with a, a big site where the HTTPS version resolves with the 200 um, and you can't get anyone to change that and you do want to change that, um, if you've got the canonical tag on the page that specifies the HTTP, so the non-secure version is the canonical version, then maybe you could stick some links in there because it's theoretically possible that people would copy and paste HTTPS links because they resolve. If it didn't resolve, then you, that would even look even less natural because how the hell did you even get this because it doesn't exist at 301s to the right place. But you'd want to have the canonical tag on there forcing the non-secure um, version to be indexed because otherwise, yeah, duplicate content. 